Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you're listening around the world, a very warm welcome from London in the UK. Here is today's news about electric cars and the future of transport. My name is Martin Lee and this is your EV News Daily for Sunday, the 4th of March 2018. Well, as promised, we said we'd take a look at the February EV sales that are coming in. A focus on North America, first of all, because that's the market where we can break down the different model sales quite easily. A little bit harder in other markets. For February, sales look like they've bounced back from a very low January. A couple of models people will naturally look out first. The first one being the Model 3. Now that should be on a very steep production curve heading upwards and the new Nissan Leaf should start to see sales picking up as deliveries happen as well. Well, according to Inside EVs, the Kia Nero plug-in hybrid electric vehicle and the Hyundai Ioniq report their first full month of sales, which I didn't realise. Uh, we're still waiting on those, by the way. Well, starting with the newest entrant, not the highest entrant. The newest one is the Nissan Leaf. It sold 895 cars in February. And that's with a pretty constrained supply. Most of those already spoken for, the early ones anyway. More cars should be arriving at dealers very soon. It's currently sixth in the league charts for February. March should see a sharp increase for Nissan Leaf, although it's been noted that even those who wanted to get one early doors couldn't get hold of one, at least until late Feb, even early March. So people who were contacting Nissan in America saying we want them as soon as possible look like they could be getting theirs in March, hence why we think the March figures are going to be way higher. Well, the Chevy Bolt is up almost 50% from this time last year, last month at uh, 1,477, although it wasn't on sale nationwide until halfway through last year, which could be one of the reasons uh, why it's uh, up so much year on year. The ever-popular Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, uh, which does very well here in the UK, struggles in the US, only 300 sold. Uh, the Toyota Prius Prime, or as we call it, the Prius Plug-in, which is not a cheap car here in the UK, starts at around £29,000, £30,000. Sold over 2,000 of them in North America, also up 50% on this time in 2017. Well, let's get on to Tesla then. As always with Tesla, they don't provide their monthly numbers and they don't break it down by territory, as far as I know, actually. So it's always a best guess uh, for the US, not the North American monthly figures. Tesla Model 3 should have been far ahead, as you know, far ahead of where they are at the moment. The target is two and a half thousand a week, but again, they're nowhere near that at the moment. They say, well, they said actually that 2018 should have delivered the low hundred thousands. So, using old figures, the Model 3, if they'd stuck to the the, the time frame they wanted to, uh, could have sold out all of the other electric vehicles combined. That's not going to happen this year, or will it? <laughs> will they will they pull it out of the hat? Uh, as always with Tesla, though, let's take a best guess at where they are. Tesla Model 3s are topping the table, by the way. So when you look at the top 10 uh, of February sales, Tesla Model 3 is the biggest selling EV in America, followed by the Toyota Prius Prime, the Chevrolet Bolt, the Tesla Model S, then the Chevy Volt, then Nissan Leaf. The Honda Clarity plug-in hybrid, then Tesla Model X, Ford Fusion Energy, and BMW i3. I think those figures uh, that BMW publish are both for the Pure Bev and the Rex as well. Now, of those, the Honda and the Ford aren't available here in Europe. So yesterday we told you about how well the e-Golf is selling here in Western Europe, and yet in America they can't get over 200 sales a month at the moment. Just goes to show you a little difference in different places around the world of what's selling and what's not. Oh, actually, apologies, I never actually told you uh, what the Model 3 estimates were. According to Inside EVs, 2,485 is their best guess on Tesla Model 3 for the month of February, and there's lots of different indicators and data points they can pull in for that. One of the most recent of course, being the Bloomberg tool, which they created to look at both VIN numbers and registrations and a best guess of, again, how many Model 3s have been made are and are on the roads. VIN numbers beginning with 8,000, I think, is the latest. Right, moving on to a UK producer of EVs and readers of Autocar may have picked up recently on the latest news from Dyson, fine makers of vacuum cleaners and hand dryers who are turning their hand and pivoting into electric cars. 
cars. It seems the reveal of their first EV is still set for 2019-2020. The auto car uh, article I read at some point said 2019. The BBC article said 2020. So it's around that time, right? It could be that a reveal is next year and we can buy it from 2020. Three models from Dyson. As a reminder, three models from Dyson on the way. The first one's going to be dipping their toe in the water. And no one knows what that means. Everyone assumed it would be low price, low quality city car type thing as Dyson make household vacuum cleaners and air dryers and things uh, but the Dyson say actually they're going to start they're going to do a Tesla and start at the top of the market get their head around how to make an electric car and then make more mainstream models well they're putting their money where their mouth is they're increasing their workforce with 300 new hires in their EV department so far Dyson's announced 2 billion pounds that's a 2.7 billion dollar investment in their electric car project. They're due to move into a brand new 750-acre facility with their 700 EV employees, which is still less than their total headcount, making all of their other products. Uh, they're making big EV investments, though. That includes big bets on artificial intelligence, although, again, not specifically to do with their cars, more to do with their products, but that was bound to be included in their electric car projects and solid-state batteries following their acquisition a few years ago. Well, James Dyson's not a fan of diesel, you can say that, and how the governments around the world have incentivized buying them. He says this, Governments around the world have encouraged the adoption of oxymoronically designated clean diesel engines through subsidies and grants. Major auto manufacturers have circumvented and duped clean air regulations. As a result, developed and developing cities are full of smog-belching cars, lorries and buses. It's a problem the others are ignoring. End quote. So that's what James Dyson says. What does he mean that the governments around the world have incentivized with subsidies and grants? Well, for instance, we still own a Golf Blue Motion, which uses a very kind of soft hybrid stop-start uh, system and some low-rolling resistance tyres and aero stuff on it. It's still a diesel car, though, uh, that sits outside in the driveway at the moment. And there's no road tax. No, I lie. There's £20 we have to pay per year uh, to own that car, which my wife drives uh, to work. Uh, and then what does he talk about duping clean air regulations? Well, automakers are allowed to switch on and off how many particulates are emitted from diesel cars, according to exceptional events. Well, an exceptional event can be classed as, is it just being very, very cold? And it can be that the car is full, uh, with a full load of passengers and a full load. There's all these different things that are technically classed as an exceptional event, and that is when very legitimately and legally car makers are allowed to change and switch on and off how many particulates are emitted from diesel cars. So the figures that you see quoted may not be the real world figures for diesel. Again, they're doing nothing wrong. It doesn't mean that they're doing something right. So that's what James Dyson, I, I assume that's what he's uh, alluding to by saying duping the clean air regulations. They're sticking to the rules, just the rules are very, very, very sucky at the moment and they're allowed to do all sorts of tricks and not cheats, but tricks in order to say one thing and do another. That's not all the car manufacturers, but many of them. We're days away from the Geneva Motor Show. VW is set to show off its fourth electric vehicle at the 88th Geneva Motor Show. Next week starts on the 6th of March. A couple of days away. They're taking the new Vision EV. <laughs> I'm not convinced about the Vision. It's V-I-Z-Z-I-O-N. Not Vision, but Vision EV to Switzerland as an addition to the ones that we already know about and we've seen maybe on the fully charged videos and stuff like that. The ID, the ID Cross, and the ID Buzz. Uh, this is the model which is going to be up against the premium luxury cars like the Model S, but not until 2020. Uh, looking forward four years, however, Volkswagen are confident of having level five, right? Level five autonomous driving in place on the ID Vision EV. Uh, also at Geneva is going to be one of the recent hits. That is the Hyundai Kona. Now, we only heard the full specs a few days ago, but the forums and EV blogs have been delighted for everything I've read uh, about the new breed of electric cars, which is uh, and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles coming from the Hyundai and Kia Korean stable. The WLTP range is about 300 miles. Most people saying real world range, about 250 miles. New LG Chem battery chemistry in all of these future EVs. The ones that they say is going to be used in the new Nissan Leaf, the 6 
60 kilowatt hour one uh, coming at the end of this year the long range version of that 250 real world miles for these um, new Hyundai's that we'll see at Geneva is enough for most people I know there's exceptions and long distance salesmen and women for most people to do five days a week of commuting take the kids to football practice on a Saturday go on a day trip on a Sunday and charge it once a week well, talking of Geneva, Sayats are heading from Spain to Switzerland and launching the Cupra e-racer, what they call the world's first 100% electric racing touring car. They're going to base it on the Seat Leon uh, platform, and it's then going to be supersized with new bumpers, fenders, if you like, depending on where you're listening to this, a bonnet or hood, grill, and a suitably extravagant rear wing that any boy racer would be proud of, uh, adding plenty of carbon fibre along the way, by the way. No specs yet on drivetrains, batteries, power, that kind of stuff. We look forward to finding out more at Geneva. Well, thank you for listening today. Hope you enjoyed it. We'd love to spread the word about electric cars. Please do share this with at least one person. More would be appreciated who might be interested. A reminder, all of our previous podcasts are available on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, all for free. While you're there, subscribe, and then it just takes a weight off your mind. You'll get them automatically in your podcast app. So hit that subscribe button and then it's done it would mean a lot uh, by the way if you would uh, rate and review if you want to no worries if not uh, if you have an amazon echo we've got an alexa skill called ev news daily to play you this as a flash briefing and follow us on twitter at ev news daily have a wonderful sunday i will see you for a brand new week catch you tomorrow